Good afternoon and welcome to the final day of the international webinar on why does disability research matter. Yesterday, we had a wonderful and engaging session on the close connection between disability and law and why is there a need for the two to work closely with each other. Today, we will be talking about a specific legal document that is the Marrakesh Treaty. The Marrakesh Treaty adopted on 27th June 2013 and entered into force on 30th September 2016 makes the production and international transfer of specially adapted books for people with blindness or visual impairments easier. It does this by establishing a set of limitations and exceptions to traditional copyright law. Today, we're extremely fortunate to have with us Mr. Dipendra Manucha to discuss the Marrakesh Treaty its impact on persons with print disabilities, and consider and analyze its implications on India. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Manocha is the lead of training and technical support and coordinates DAISY consortiums projects in developing countries. He's a member of the executive committee of the World Blind Union and is the managing trustee of the Saksham Trust. He has been the elected president of the DAISY Forum of India, which is a network of more than 74 organizations in India, serving the persons with disability, with blindness and low vision. I'd like to now invite Mr. Manocha to deliver his talk. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name uh, who was introducing me. Sir Nidhi. Nidhi, hi Nidhi. So just one uh, correction in my introduction. So I'm no longer the member of the executive committee of the World Bank Union. I represented DAISY Consortium there for eight years, but that period ended uh, a while ago. So, okay. so yeah, I think, um, but thanks for a wonderful uh, introduction and uh, also setting the uh, course for it. So my slides are actually, are my slides visible? Yes, sir. Right, okay, excellent. So, I think the stage was set uh, yesterday when we talk about, uh, I think you said that full session on uh, the connectivity between the legal system, the law and disability. So, a lot actually, a uh, lot of uh, mitigation of the impact of um, the disability can happen at the policy stage. And, uh, legal structure of course is the at the helm of this policy uh, framework but let's talk about um, you know just understand how the legal system is a national legal system is actually connected to the international legal system and how we uh, what we normally understand is what is happening how much of that actually is is being impacted by the international uh, laws, so to say. So, so what we what you understand? What is a treaty? So, treaty essentially, or or uh, we may also use the word uh, the second term on it, which has very similar connotation, is a convention. So, a convention or a treaty is almost like a. a like international law so um, so so it's, it's it's like an act that that our parliament passes similarly international parliament or international community internet the whole governments come together and agree on the effect of a model law and that is the law that uh, that then is um, um, you know, so so what what is Parliament in, in in India, for example? So we have got a state state legislature and then a, a central government, uh, federal, um, you know, Parliament structure here. Similarly, we also have this United Nations organization, which is almost like running like an international government, and each member state, each country, actually sends its representatives to this. Uh, central, or you can say an international government. So we are equal 
participants to this international government, which is called the body is called the United Nations Organization. And uh, this, uh, like we have various ministries, similarly, there are several agencies which deal with specific subjects within this international government, so to say. Um, apologies for using the generic terms. We obviously, it is, it is just for uh, clarity. Uh, we should not be using words like international government because it, it may have different connotations, but just for general understanding, I, I am taking the liberty of using these terminologies. So, um, so like we have a ministry of health, etc. similar thing in international government would be World Health Organization, which deals with the health issues uh, at the international level. And one of such agencies that deals with intellectual property rights in, um, is called WIPO, the World Intellectual Property Organization, with its headquarters in Geneva, in uh, Switzerland. Um, uh, so, um, so any of these um, international laws or treaties or conventions, as we call it, are actually administered by one of these UN agencies. Like, uh, again, similarity uh, in India, uh, at the national level, which are much closer to us, is that every law that is introduced in the parliament uh, actually formulated by one of the ministries and that ministry is then uh, responsible for the implementation of that law once it is passed from the parliament of the country. So similarly, uh, any convention or any treaty is owned by one of the UN agencies and uh, the Marrakesh that is that we are talking about actually administered by the World Intellectual Property Organization. Um, so once the text of the whole law is finalized, uh, it is then made open for various countries to sign and, and ratify the, uh, the, uh, the treaty or the convention. And uh, uh, when it comes to, so we let's take this example of Marrakesh Treaty. So we just informed that in 2013, the, after a uh, lot of negotiations amongst stakeholders and the government representatives, uh, the final text of this treaty was finalized in 2000, May 2013. And why it is called Marrakesh Treaty is that the session in which Finally, the whole text of this Marrakesh Treaty was passed by uh, unanimously by all the participating countries. Uh, that that mm -hmm. happened in the city of Marrakesh. And that is why this treaty is now called the Marrakesh Treaty. Um, the, the, the requirement for uh, creating this treaty was actually mooted by the World Blind uh, Union, uh, the WBU. It is the representative body of persons with blindness or low vision or deafblind persons uh, in the world. And uh, so that is where this treaty actually, WIPO took this matter up on the um, proposal of at least three countries which supported the requirement of the World Blind Union. Um, once the uh, uh, we just thought that the treaty was um, came into force in uh, in September on on September thirtieth to be precise in two thousand sixteen. Um, India was the first country to ratify it in the world. Actually, we were the first ones to do this ratification, uh, which happened in July twenty fourteen, and the twentieth country. Uh, ratified this treaty on 30th of June. And uh, the normal practice is that three months after the 20th country has ratified, the treaty or the international law comes into force. 
And what does it mean? Does this law apply to the whole world automatically? It actually does not. Um, it, it, it is applied only to two countries who have ratified this treaty. So when 20 countries ratified, that means all those 20 countries committed that the this treaty, the international law, uh, will be applicable in our country. So it depends on the legal system of a country whether that international law is directly applicable as is when we ratify, or we have to first of all reflect that the provisions of that uh, international law in our national laws, and it is only the national laws which actually uh, can be enforced within the country. And our Indian legal system belongs to the second category. So even when we ratify uh, any convention or the treaty, it, it actually cannot be uh, uh, enforced directly uh, within our uh, own country. And we have to harmonize our national laws to, to make it applicable within the country. Although there have been certain cases where, um, where the courts have actually um, stood that and said that since we have ratified any international law and our own law, even after five years, 10 years, have not yet uh, in, in, in not is not yet in full compliance of the uh, international law, but are um, uh, considering that the spirit of the law uh, should actually acknowledge it. And so uh, at times court does take this view that we, uh, even if our law is not very clear, we should then follow uh, what is written in the international law uh, for clarity. Uh, within the country. So that's the, um, you can say the basic uh, relationship between what, what happens at the international level and what, what kind of implications there are when India or when our country actually goes and ratifies any international uh, law. The second significant uh, law, uh, uh, international law or a convention, of course, you must have been hearing a lot about uh, it in during the certificate course itself, is the UNCRPD. Uh, the short form is called the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And uh, this is the second, you can say this is another law. Um, uh, there's, there's also a Child Rights Convention, which is directly, uh, you know, has a lot of implication on the rights of children with disabilities, for example. Uh, but then this Marrakesh Treaty is again a treaty which is directly connected to the rights of persons with uh, disabilities. It is for persons with print disabilities. What is the purpose of this treaty, the Marrakesh Treaty that we are talking about? The purpose is that, um, that we realize that a very, very small percentage of publications uh, which the, the material which is published in, in the world ever gets translated into an accessible format for people who cannot read normal print. So if, if somebody cannot read normal print, then the same publication needs to be made available in an alternative format, which means that it has to be converted. And the normal copyright regime prohibits, prohibits any conversion or any adaptation of the original work in any other format without seeking permission or without uh, the permission of uh, the right owner. Um, so copyright laws nationally and internationally, because copyright law again is copyright is something which is a regional uh, right, which means that if I have a right, uh, you know, copyright on certain work in India, it is not automatically, it doesn't translate into uh, having that copyright in uh, in a different country. So it's it's a regional right, and uh, 
uh, what it also meant was that um, that that the copyright actually was becoming a hurdle in this uh, translation or or adaptation of any of the original publication into any other alternative format such as braille or uh, audio book or uh, you know the digital text that can be read with uh, with the screen reading software yes. so we do convert these books into all these different formats either large print audio braille um, digital text actually plays a huge role in uh, in in reading these texts in any of these three formats large print audio or braille and um, and copyright law was becoming a hurdle in two ways one was that um, that, that what was happening was that if uh, for example a student of uh, kirodimal college uh, or a professor in kirodimal college um, uh, prescribed a book to be read by the students for completing their assignment now, uh, and if that text is not available in accessible format, then the legal provision would be that now the conversion agency or anybody or an individual who wants to convert that printed text into an audio, for example, then uh, we will need to go to the right owner, the copyright owner of that uh, publication and seek permission to be able to convert that into accessible format. Now, um, and since this conversion is not promising any financial gains for the copyright owner, it becomes the least priority work for that person. Because copyright owner is, uh, you know, exploits their copyright for commercial gains, for monetary gains. So if they give permission for their book to be published, they ask, they will, they will get royalties uh, or um, whatever funding arrangement they get into. But uh, generally, if we are pre preparing a Braille book, there's hardly any scope of uh, being able to offer the, those kind of uh, monetary gains to the copyright owners. And it really, as I said, became the least priority task for any copyright owner to deal with such requests. The result used to be that if we were strictly going by the law, we would have to wait for and chase uh, copyright owners for months to be able to get a permission to convert that book into accessible format. And you can imagine that situation where uh, the book is actually required to complete an assignment. Can that professor or the student wait for those many months just to get the permission to get this task, get this book accessible? So that was the first problem, the legal hurdle that this Marrakesh Treaty wanted to address. And the second um, key problem was that uh, uh, if, if we got permission and if we converted a book into audio format as a talking book, it was not permitted to provide a copy of that same accessible version to another country. So uh, one of the classic cases that was um, shared during the negotiations of for the Marrakesh Treaty was that when the Harry Potter books were released, you can imagine that at the, the audio versions of those books were produced from scratch in at least 42 different countries. Now, 42 different countries actually did their own recordings of the same book to make it accessible. Now, the amount of money and resources which could have been spent on converting 42 books into accessible format, all that funds and money and human resource went into just making that one title available all across the world where it was required. Um, I normally say that the problem is actually the mathematics of this problem is that often we found that one plus one equals one, which means that two organizations converted uh, titles uh, into accessible format, but at the end of the whole exercise, the total number of titles available in accessible format remained just one, because both the organizations ended up converting the same title into accessible format. Um, 
in india we spend about 10000 rupees per title for conversion on an average whereas more professionally and at the human resource cost in a country like uh, united kingdom for example the same um, the the harry potter book for example the conversion of harry potter book um, took almost i mean they they would spend about 2000 pounds on each book conversion on that uh, in that market 2000 pounds is almost like um, you know 160000 rupees being spent on conversion of one title into accessible format that's the kind of resource about that got replicated about 42 times just for one title and this was happening because the copyright law is a regional law and it was not allowed to exchange an accessible format copy um uh, within within uh, you know outside the boundaries of a country um so uh, there were there are two key provisions uh, which are which were there uh, which were which are part of the marrakesh treaty one is that uh, it it propagates that the the copyright law must have an exception allowing the production of books or conversion of books into accessible format without seeking any pro- permission from the copyright owner so it allows individuals or not for profit organizations to convert uh, any title uh, into accessible format without waiting for any correspondence or any connectivity with the copyright owner so that removed the first hurdle and the second provision of course is that it it allowed international exchange of books um, amongst the authorized entities of uh, within the country um one of the key purpose of this treaty was not just to 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 provide books in accessible format for persons with print disabilities but it actually also wanted to protect the uh, you can say uh, the 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 commercial interests of the copyright owner because it's fine that uh, the persons with print disabilities are not giving any monetary benefit to the right owners but they need to earn their living they need to earn their bread and butter just through their own intellectual property rights and uh, the protection of those rights are also uh, uh, you know part of the very important duties when we ask for our rights or um, for these books to be converted in accessible format so um uh, so so the treaty actually made all those provisions it laid down those conditions rules etc to um to address the concerns of the copyright owners while implementing this uh, marrakesh treaty while implementing these exceptions and the exceptions also for the international exchange now uh wipo um, obviously is administering this uh, this uh, treaty but then within wipo they actually created um, a body called accessible books consortium it's a very interesting um, uh, body there it's not a separate legal entity it's working as one of the departments important departments within wipo that actually came out uh, it was a transition from the stakeholders platform uh, the stakeholders platform was created for negotiating content of the marrakesh treaty and the stakeholders platform uh, was in 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 since for almost 10 12 years um, or or maybe sorry just about 6 7 years before the whole text was finalized and it had representatives from the international publishers association the blindness organizations 
the the huge library systems that was in, that were involved in production and distribution of books so um, national and uh, you know government and non government agencies who are involved in this whole process they were all sitting across the table and this was called a stakeholders platform um, i actually uh, was fortunate to host a meeting of one of such stakeholders platform meeting right here in new delhi way back in 2010 and uh, so we we would sort of sit around table and negotiate uh, about and try to convince each other to what is the best way of uh, you know dealing with and providing solution to this problem of accessible books and once the treaty was finalized so now there was no longer any need for the stakeholders platform but then it was thought that the implementation i mean the wipo uh, needs to play some role in implementation of this Uh, treaty all across the world, and that is how this stakeholders platform was then transitioned to Accessible Books Consortium (ABC) in short. And uh, this consortium uh, has a board which has representatives of authors, the International Federation of Library Association, the Daisy Consortium, which is in a way a network of um authorized entities or organizations that that actually produce and distribute books in accessible format and um, also the world blind union or international council for the educators of visually impaired all these uh, partners all these key stakeholders uh, are part of the board of this uh, accessible books consortium now that is involved in various so there are three areas of focus for this accessible one is that uh, one is capacity building so um, as i said the the law actually does not just look at the rights of persons with print disabilities it also acknowledges the duties of the stakeholders uh, in protecting the rights of the uh, you know the commercial interests of the right owners and uh, so that uh, required uh, establishing a well structured infrastructure uh, in any country or any organization to be able to uh, follow those rules etc and to do this task properly and that that's why a need was felt of building capacity especially in the low and low middle lower income group countries where this whole uh work of providing books in accessible format was being implemented by very very small voluntary organizations and uh, there was as i said was need uh, amongst publishers amongst the organizations that are providing services to persons with print disabilities or uh, even the government representatives the copyright offices the, the whole capacity building exercise was undertaken uh, by has been undertaken by the accessible consortium and it still is continuing on uh, on on the implementation and building capacity in the countries to um, to be able to implement this treaty uh, while this whole negotiation was going on even the blindness organizations actually said that uh, that converting that book into accessible format is not our first choice what is our first choice our first choice is that when a publication comes out the original publication itself should be born accessible and that is how the second uh, focus area of abc came into being which is called inclusive publishing and it involves uh, advocacy and promotion of uh, formats of production and distribution amongst the mainstream publishers so that they uh, themselves for example could release their books as epub uh, with accessibility uh, complying to accessibility standards applying universal design principles saying that um, the whole book uh, uh, would would become a universal design uh, would would comply to universal design and uh, will be accessible to all 
um, that also is uh, there is also a need for capacity building for that but a lot of that work is actually advocacy work because the publishers are now required to change their workflow to make sure that when the, when the book is released it is actually released in accessible format and finally talk about the, the impact i will i will uh, show you the impact of this whole uh, inclusive publishing uh, issue uh, the third focus area is uh, global book service. They have actually accessible books consortium has set up a mechanism for safe international exchange of accessible format. So, um, like if, if if in India we would want to have access to a book that has been produced in Canada, how do we do that? So, it, so accessible books consortium kind of created an international exchange for accessible books. It has created that infrastructure that the catalog of Indian organizations is part of this global catalog. And I can actually get access to, get onto this catalog and, uh, and request any of the books that is available on that catalog. Uh, there it is in, in various things. And um, happy to announce that just last week and 100, 100 uh, entities or organizations have joined this global book catalog, and it is becoming one of the biggest uh, collections of uh, accessible format books uh, for persons with disabilities. So that's the real impact happening, the real work happening on on implementation of what was actually said or what was proposed in the Marrakesh Treaty. So um, one of the key terms or the key uh, things for the implementation of this treaty is a term called authorized entity or AE in short. So any organization, and there is a clear definition of who can be an authorized entity in a country who is eligible to participate in this international exchange of books or to exploit the exceptions in the copyright laws uh, of the nation. And uh, the authorized entities also have this responsibility of making sure that the books that they receive from their uh, partner authorized entity of another country, uh, that those books are then distributed only to the target population of persons with disabilities and not in the general market. Because if, if these copies are leaked into general market, it hurts the commercial interests of the copyright owner very, very badly. So that's the responsibility that we organizations who are like authorized entities are undertaking, are taking upon ourselves that, that we want to make sure, we will need to make sure that these books are reaching only to the target pop. And uh, so let's come to India. I mean, this is the whole international mechanism that has been set up, what the treaty is and what is the international mechanism for it. Now in India, the scenario is that we are a huge geographical region and a continent in itself, and almost a mini world when it comes to exchange of books. And uh, because we have 22 national uh, languages, official languages, and nine of those official languages are actually figure in the, uh, the top 25 most spoken languages, including of the Indian language official languages actually. So you can understand that a huge population, um, language population is of the Indian languages and 22 languages and, um, and which also means that the central agency is not enough to deal with this whole country as a whole. And that is why we need to get together. There will be sev uh, several entities from within India who will need to come together to address each other's needs or, or to meet each, each other's needs and reaching out to the whole population of this country and especially the various language groups and geographical regions and so on and so forth. We have huge diversity in India, we all know about it. I mean, I don't need to sort of emphasize uh, to this group at least for this. So what did we do for this? Uh, so this is an ecosystem that we actually developed um within india um 
the whole process actually started for developing this ecosystem right when the Marrakesh Treaty text was being negotiated. So it is not something that started after Mar Marrakesh Treaty came into force. This is something that started way back in 2007 before, because 2007 was uh, was uh, was a main year because the basic forum of India, the network of organizations. Uh, providing services to persons with print disabilities actually came came into existence as a uh, you can say as an informal group uh, in 2007, and we started uh, negotiating with the government and uh, together started working towards uh, the same goals which which are there at uh, the Marrakesh Treaty. But we actually the Daisy Forum of India went slightly ahead because. We have also had to address the um, economic um, restrictions, which means that whatever solutions we were trying to build for India, they had to be affordable for India. Like these uh, daisy, daisy players or special braille displays or smartphones or computers with screen reading software, et cetera, all these solutions, uh, assistive technology solutions, which are required to read those books in accessible format, they had to be made as made affordable and compatible with Indian languages. So these are like technology gaps which had to be addressed. We had to have our OCRs that are working in Indian languages. We had to have our speech uh, systems that had to be made to work in Indian languages. And all that work uh, was happening uh, separately in, in, in different quarters and segregatedly, but Daisy Forum of India kind of brought all the stakeholders together and we started working together to address these issues. Um, one of the things that Lazy Forum of India also did was that it created a national repository of accessible format books. Uh, so it's Sugamme Pustakale, and uh, this, uh, this, this library, this online library was created um, as a common library for all nations. So whatever accessible format books we produce, we put it on this Sugamya Pustakale so that it is, uh, you know, one plus one doesn't remain one anymore. And once a title is produced, it is made available to anybody all across the country. So like um, I would give a clear example, like uh, if, if Karunimal College has a resource center, uh, which is converting books into accessible format for its students. Now the, now the books which are required for, for a Karunimal College student would also be relevant for a Hansaraj College student or a St. Stephen College student. So how do how do people in different colleges in the same city, and not to talk of the different cities of India, uh, how do we know whether uh, that book actually exists or not in accessible format before we start converting them? So this is a platform, Sugamma Pustakale, where a lot of these university resource centers and libraries and public libraries are all getting onboarded to to share whatever we are producing and to derive from this library whatever is required by our uh, members on directly. Um, so this whole ecosystem uh, that was developed that various organizations together are creating content. They are putting all that content on the online library such as Sugamya Pustakale. This Sugamya Pustakale is also connected to international libraries like Bookshare and the Accessible Books Consortium's Global Book Service. And uh, bringing all those books together to the end users and delivering though that content actually directly on the device of the user. So if I have a smartphone on my in my pocket, my this smartphone or a daisy player is connected directly to Sugama Pustakale, which, I have, which, which, is, uh, which again is connected to these international libraries which mean at any one given point of time, I carry the whole library in my pocket if I have any one of those four devices which are shown on this ecosystem. So, and plus an important part of all this ecosystem also is to build capacity, to train people, to make aware uh, people that all this exists and to build capacity among people on how to use these uh, this ecosystem. Uh, <clears throat> to make all this happen, Daisy Forum of India also worked very, very tirelessly to uh, to get all these things done in the uh, national laws, for example. 
So a very interesting fact to see here is that the exception in the Indian copyright law came in May 2012. Now, if you have paid attention to it, the Marrakesh Treaty text was finalized in 2013. India ratified that treaty in 2014. But to implement that treaty, the provision for the copyright law had already come in 2012 which was actually compliant to whatever text was finalized in the Marrakesh Treaty. And this happened because uh, India was very actively participating in the, uh, in the negotiations of the Marrakesh Treaty. Our government representatives also worked very, very positively in favor of uh, you know, uh, ensuring the rights. They were very, very favorable in, for, for persons with disabilities. Hats off to them because this uh, you know, you know, they were they, they took everybody along and played a vital role in finalizing the text of the treaty in the in the seventies there. Um, and uh, because we had our copyright law in place even before the text was finalized, that enabled uh, India to actually get this um, feather in the cap of. Uh, becoming the first country of the world to ratify the Marrakesh Treaty in 2014. Um, uh, we, uh, the Daisy Forum, one is that we amended our copyright law. Uh, India is committed to the ancient strategy, which is uh, regional kind of uh, targets and goals to be achieved in the UN ASCAP region, the Asia Pacific region. And we are also committed to the sustainable development goals. We are, we have um, uh, ratified the UN conventions. So all those international commitments are there. And in compliance to those conventions, we came up with our PWD Act in 2016, which was harmonized to this international uh, convention for persons' rights or persons with disabilities. But yes, I mean the compliance of the copyright law with the Marrakesh Treaty happened even before. The, the the text of the treaty was finalized. So that's the that's one of the very very big achievements and the impact of the work of you know, all stakeholders coming together under Daisy Forum of India to work together with the government and with the stakeholders, including publishers. So it's not that we were alone. The publishers also were standing with us all through. Some had doubts. We could clear their doubts, and most of the uh, publishers actually came in support of. Uh, the, the blindness community under Daisy Forum of India to support the activities uh, there and getting this law in place. So uh, what are the activities that we were, we had done for this implementation, for this achievement? Uh, that uh, we actually have been implementing the capacity building programs that, that were designed uh, for the low and low middle lower income group countries. And uh, if you have time, I think if you do a Google search of Accessible Books Consortium uh, in WIPO, you will see a video there of the Indian implementation of how we actually made a huge difference in a village in Bihar, how this project actually enabled a student right there in the village in Bihar and getting empowered with the required books that they had under this program. So it was one of the very beautiful, uh, you can say, a case study that came out um, from India as part of our implementation of this uh, capacity building program in India. Um, I've already told you that we launched our Sudhamya Pustakale powered by TCS Access Infinity, because the industry, government, civil society, all of the organizations have come together in joining and creating uh, program. Another program was a Simply Reading Project, uh, the Simply Reading and Simply Reading Catapult. We actually then again, I mean, this is all taking this, this whole ecosystem of accessible content, devices, and training into the, into the, uh, to the hands of the users. Because if we leave out any one of these components, the whole ecosystem falls down. So the whole solution has to be actually be parallelly developed and taken to the users. And this is what we have been doing in these projects. Um, so one of the examples of the whole of these effort is that 
government of india runs a program called adip scheme and so are these devices which have been developed for uh, india uh, to fill up these technology gaps to make these devices available in affordable cost like for example a daisy player uh, is now available in 16 indian languages a text to speech engine for 16 indian languages have been developed um, as part of our dfi efforts and those are now available on these devices a braille displays also supports all those 16 17 indian languages our screen reading software on a computer can now support they can enable a person with blindness to read and write in any of the indian languages in the mainstream script there is no longer that if i write a letter i would need a transcriber to transcribe into some format that you can read anybody can read what i am writing and i can read what anybody else is uh, writing so this is uh, possible this is only because the uh the the whole of effort uh, for the implementation so what is the impact of all these activities and efforts so about all so you can say like in past 50 60 years so many libraries in india were producing books but the total Uh, you can say collection of those books is of just about twenty one thousand titles in accessible. That actually highlights the real problem. What small number of titles actually become available as accessible format? But this itself is actually huge because before Sugama Pustakale, any user had access to just about hundred two hundred titles, not more than that, because they were not connected to the whole country. and they were connected to either one or two or three libraries at most and those organizations would be able to offer just these 100 200 300 titles in accessible format for all the rest we were always dependent on somebody else to directly read the text out to us uh, similarly now through the abc global book service we have access to almost 6 lakh 50000 titles so just imagine from 21000 titles of what we have converted all organizations put together then 650000 titles from the international community through global book service similarly 735000 titles coming to us from another global library called bookshare so uh, all the 1 million for almost uh, 14 lakh titles instead of just 100 200 titles which we used to get earlier we have access to about 14 lakh titles in accessible format coming to us through this library but then what is uh, so now earlier again i mean that the outreach is now increasing um this number is one which i'm never happy with we have about 46000 type uh, users registered on uh, our libraries taking benefit of this library services but um these 46000 people are from 5.3 million persons with blindness or low vision uh which is um, the figure in 2011 census but if we talk of persons with print disabilities which is not just persons with blindness low vision but because there are persons with learning disabilities dyslexia etc also there that number is actually much much larger who for example says there are about 2 billion persons with blindness and low vision itself in india but yeah i mean that, that all depends on what how do we define persons with blindness and low vision and how do we define persons with print disabilities so just reaching out to 46000 is better than where we were 5 years ago much much better it's revolutionary we have really multiplied from 5 years ago but there is a long long way to go to be able to cover this whole population another example of why we need so much of effort in increasing that number to many many folds from 46000 is that one example i can give is that um, like like in a country like finland now the whole population of that country is 5.5 million the total population is 5.5 million and population of persons with blindness in india as i said blindness low vision in india 5.3 million so our population of persons with blindness and low vision is almost equal to the whole population of 
So Finland is also running a, a special library, online library for persons with uh, blindness or for print disabilities. And we are also running a library for persons with print disabilities. We have 46,000 members today. Can you imagine number of members there in Finland? They have 50,000 people registered there in that in their in their library. So you can imagine that 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 our coverage right now is so much less in comparison to the kind of population that we have. So uh, the usage, of course, has increased um, uh, from Sudama Pustakale itself. Um, by 30th September um, 2021, more than one lakh titles have been downloaded by individuals. And these do not include titles that have been downloaded from Bookshare or uh, directly from other resources. Or like if a school is there, people actually download the book once and then you know, provide it uh, on the devices of all the classmates, all the whole of the class. So if a teacher is downloading one book, they would copy that book on, on the devices of all the students in that classroom. So those numbers are not actually really captured here. So that is why this number of one lakh is actually less than what the real number is. So um, after this EDIP scheme, et cetera, we have actually provided subsidy on almost 30,000 devices in past three, four years time. So it's, it's, uh, it's something which is, better than most of the developing countries, but it is much less than what is happening in higher income group countries. Now it is really upon us, what is our mind? Do we want to compare ourselves with poor nations or do we want to aspire to do what the best service, best serving country is doing uh, in the world? I plan to choose, I, I opt to choose the better because I don't think we are in any way less, we know, how to deal with our populations and how to work uh, with, with our populations, with our uh, circumstances. So this is just a glimpse of, uh, you know, giving like how an international effort uh, percolates into India, how, how, in, how the real implementation happens. Law is one thing, but its implementation has several dimensions. It's not enough to just create a law. There is a whole ecosystem that has to come together. The whole the stakeholders have to come together. They have to work together really to address this whole uh, problem and to provide a solution. And with this in fact, impact also, we are nowhere near actually claiming that we have provided the whole solution. We have just taken steps in the right direction and we just need to accelerate the speed multiply the whole impact many, many folds uh, in the years to come. So with that, the slideshow for my talk is actually complete. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are and any doubts. Nidhi, are you there? Back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Manocha, for outlining in great detail the impact of Marrakech Treaty on persons with print disability. We're also grateful that you analyzed its implications in context of India. Now, I would like to throw the floor open to discussion. I would like to ask the participants to place their questions in the chat box or alternatively raise their hand and when called upon to unmute themselves and ask their questions. Okay, hi, Shampa, you can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, first of all, sir, I want to uh, really thank you uh, for uh, taking this endeavor to make uh, books accessible to us. Actually, I'm also uh, taking the facility from Shugama Postakala. So uh, my question uh, to you is actually two questions uh, I have. Uh, first is um, like we now uh, at the uh, the second half of uh, last century, twentieth century, that is, twenty um, first century. So uh, we are we have started to to uh, build this accessible format books 
uh, just 60 or, or 70 years back. But before that, we have millions of titles available. So it's really difficult to um, uh, uh, convert all those uh, books into accessible format. Uh, so these books are not so much available to us yet. Uh, I mean, so far. But um, you have spoken us about the uh, uh, inclusive publishing. So, sir, I just want to know um, how, uh, I mean, what the response we are getting from the publishers uh, regarding this, because the new books, each and every day new, new books are coming out. So, uh, so that we can get these new titles uh, as soon as they are, they are published from the uh, publication house. So this is my first question. What response, how much response we are getting? And my um, second question is that you have also told, told us about the, uh, you, you are getting um, persons trained in these um, converting um, books or making accessible format books, etc. So uh, what is the process actually uh, in, in different regions of our country, if I say, then what is uh, the process uh, by which you are collecting the volunteers or rather uh, training uh, uh, the, the uh, um, willing persons uh, is uh, by, by any course, uh, permanent course or some uh, kind of time to time, any um, workshop kind of thing or what is the process actually? So these are my two questions. Sir. Thank you so much for your questions, both questions relevant, very relevant questions. So yes, the answer is inclusive publishing for uh, really increasing the number of titles which are coming through. Uh, we for for, for uh, this inclusive publishing does not just apply to the publishers, but again, the publishing industry has its own ecosystem, which means which which includes production, distribution and reading devices. And uh, so one of the examples of making that, that ecosystem accessible is the Kindle books, for example. So uh, today it is possible that uh, if any book is actually uh, released on Amazon Kindle, I can, as a person with print disability, go and buy it and start reading it right there and then either as large print or start listening to it or start reading it in braille, actually. All that is actually possible today. So, uh, and, and one of the examples that I give is that, uh, you know, at one point of time, I was uh, just wanted to read everything which is coming out of Chetan, Chetan Bhagat and the day, the day he released his book, um, you know, so by, by next morning, I'd already read that book. As a person with blindness that was, unimaginable uh, before this whole accessibility thing or inclusive publishing actually became possible. So today also, uh, uh, so that, that is where, and, and uh, one thing that the impact that is happening with inclusive publishing is that uh, there, I, I talked about 14 lakh titles, uh, 1.4 million titles, which are coming to us through these special libraries. But one single bookstore becoming accessible, mainstream bookstore becoming accessible, suddenly made about 40 lakh books accessible to me. So the impact of inclusive publishing is absolutely huge. Uh, second thing is that it is also about standardization. So one effort is that Kindle became accessible. Um, that became accessible because of the work that happened in USA, because the National Federation of the Blind USA fought a battle which made which which forced Amazon to make Kindle system accessible for persons with blindness. The the side effect of that was that in the Amazon when it launched Kindle in India, that also was completely accessible for us. Um, but within India, we have yet to see a lot of success in such material matters. You were talking about all the legacy and old documents which exist. Now, all those copyright free documents and um, old documents are actually getting digitized into Digital Library of India. But the standards for digital text on Digital Library of India is, is not conducive to make it fully accessible to us. 
they actually had technological gaps uh, to be filled. So earlier they did not have a choice to make it accessible because the OCR did not exist. So they were only putting digital image uh, on, on such things. But that's the way to go. That's the future. Very, very rightly thought about. Um, the younger generation will really have to play a huge role in taking this cause forward uh, further. So second question was, how can people actually join? Um, yes, um, any partner organization like Saksham, uh, the Saksham, uh, for example, can offer, uh, we, we have actually created a digital platform for people to contribute in as, as uh, uh, um, you know, a volunteer or a reader, proofreaders to convert books in accessible format. We have been experimenting in many different models. Like with one of the institutions, we said that you have about 20 students within your own institution, and we are ready to we would build your capacity to address the needs of all people within your own institution. And uh, we used to run digitization marathons in that uh, school and, uh, and, and uh, you know they have really taken it up any student with blindness that goes to that school their reading needs are met by the volunteers within those school that school itself so these kind of efforts are uh, happening and uh, the, the infrastructure exists we have got training videos uh, training materials on how anybody who wants can do that very easily. It's not a com complicated process. All that you need to know is to how to work in Microsoft Word, and we can sort of train you. We can provide you with um, uh, methods of how you can contribute. Even persons with blindness themselves actually can contribute uh, in in a big way uh, in this collection. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for this um, answer. And sir, I just want to uh, just with you say the same thing, like we have a long way to go. And basically the regional languages, if I talk about regional languages, then it's really, really too far. Uh, because uh, what I see um, in my experience, uh, the English or, or English books are rather available. But the re, uh, the books from regional languages are really, really very, uh, very scarce um, uh, in accessible format. So yes, um, we have a long way to go. Absolutely. And thank you again. And the, and the technology gaps for Indian languages have uh, been filled very, very recently. Like yes. we did not have a working OCR for a very, very long time. It's just past two, three years that we actually have a working OCR. Uh, which which we can increase the production of books in Indian languages now. So um, plus the awareness is very very low. So even yes. though the technology solutions exist, people are not using it because they've still not been exposed to them, and the change in education system has not yet taken place. Awareness is also not there, so people are people are not aware that these uh, things are possible even. Absolutely. So we need to reach out. And thank you so much for taking this and your first part. Thank you. Sir, the next question is from Rimpi Arora. Right. As you mentioned that registered users are very less. It is because of the lack of awareness among the users as well as the educational institutes, especially the colleges and universities. In this regard, I would like to ask what we can do to create awareness among the institutional authorities so that the information would reach to the users who run one pillar to other pillar, get their books recorded or other options to access the resources material. So uh, I would say that it's, it's um, what we have said is that uh, earlier we used to think that once we come out with the solution and we just tell it once to people and they would grab it and run it, run and grab it. That's not the reality. Uh, and it's a it's a hard thing to even realize that it's not a reality. Even if you tell people that such thing exists, the uptake is very slow because it involves the whole change management. You know, uh, uh, people need to adopt to the new methods of reading and writing, and uh, and it will go institution by institution. Uh, 
we have just done a tie up with karunimal college trying to you know work out a whole strategy of how within the college itself all the students could be made uh, uh, aware and uh, could be enabled could be empowered to use these technologies and how as an educational institution kmc should be could be uh, teaching or taking this uh, whole thing forward like how they can make use of the whole of this new methods of uh, providing books or writing assignments etc in their day to day teaching so all that change has to happen and you can always uh, as i said i think i think this word has to people who are taking this word forward the champions who can uh, further tell at least two more people um, you know those kind of campaigns need to run and we need lot of hands uh, as champions who who can be initiated and who can help others on board because there is there is a technological challenge for sure people are there who have not used technology from from beginning now suddenly in a day they will not become empowered so they need peer to peer support they need hand holding they need encouragement to take this thing forward and so uh, this peer to peer i think um, awareness and positive words will make a huge difference thank you sir we really need champions i mean if if anybody is interested to work in this area with us please you are welcome because you are you are taking this technology and solutions and these kind of solutions to even five more people is 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 very very valuable so so please come forward for sure thank you sir i would uh, like to uh, good evening sir sir i also just want to know i am rimpi aroda uh, actually sir i just want to know is there any process that universities can contact uh, sugmaya or Uh, these uh, kind of the programs and activities what is the process of getting in touch with you so yes uh, there are contact details right there in sugam pustakale website but uh, i can also say that i am uh, as a founder um, uh, at saksham you can get in touch with the saksham.org is the website okay sir Write thank to you us, uh, uh, or uh, call us all the numbers contact details are provided there Okay. Just please uh, get in touch. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sorry, sir, for interrupting. Uh, I just want to ask one more thing. I'm Shampa Vadibe. Sir, uh, if we just want to um, make any webinar or any workshop kind of this to uh, uh, just make the awareness among our institution, uh, educational institutions, then uh, I mean, how to do that? Uh, can we reach uh, directly to? Um, Shugama Pustakala, whatever you have said, the contact can you use that? You can write to library at saksham dot org. It's an easy email ID to remember. Just write to library at saksham dot org. Okay. We will be happy to uh, provide resource persons, uh, even in local languages, for conducting such workshops. Okay, sir. Very, very thank you. We will definitely contact. Hi Rekha, please go ahead and ask your question. Yes. So first of all, thank you for such an articulate talk. So my question is: Is there any copyright issues when a person with disabilities asks their friends or seniors to record a book for his or her own studies? Now you are you are fully protected now with this copyright exception that we have in two thousand twelve. please feel free there is no restriction on that only thing is that you should not be sharing such recordings or such digital text with uh, people who are not persons with any disabilities you can obviously ask people to record for you but you can't distribute it further that's the only restriction but otherwise feel free i mean that you are completely protected under the copyright law okay sir thank you so much I'd like to ask the participants to please place their questions in the chat box. Alternately, alternatively, raise their hands. Uh, hi, Santosh. Please go uh, ahead. Hi, hi, Nidhi. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the presentation. 
uh, sir, I was just, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a, a comment and observation that uh, uh, that I'm following from yesterday's talk uh, with, uh, by uh, Professor Samita Dhanda, where she was talking about how we can learn from disability studies uh, for the benefit of uh, not only for the disabled community, but also for uh, all, all of us, right? Uh, uh, and this is how we can learn from this discipline. So, uh, I, and this copyright issue, I just want to bring in uh, where we have seen uh, how the, the copyright issue has been as, as a contention point, uh, even with the, let's say, photocopying a particular uh, book, right? Uh, the famous case would be the B school case where uh, this, this particular photocopy shop was raided by the publisher uh, and all. So uh, again, this 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 kind of dialogue and this kind of uh, mechanism uh, help us to understand the need of disabled person, uh, not just the need of them, but also uh, the need of the people at, uh, in larger uh, 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 society, right? Let's say the people with uh, low income, right, who cannot afford uh, those uh, books, uh, which is which is very costly, uh, which are very costly and all. So uh, uh, and uh, that, so that kind of uh, mechanism that you have uh, worked out with the publishers and all uh, the same kind of work uh, 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 mechanism can be uh, also work out for the for, for the student with low income uh, 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 in terms of uh, allowing the photocopy and all. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, one comment I just wanted. I completely to agree. Uh, I think the key is that uh, you see even publishers, uh, what we found out, I mean, they, they had no issues related to uh, acknowledging the problem and committing for the solution. So they, they they said that yes, we want to provide a solution. Now, what is that solution? What that would give them confidence that their commercial interests are not hurt because they are also struggling you know it's it's as i said i mean the commercial interest is not a not a bad interest it's something that they need to sustain themselves to be able to bring out those new publications new uh, relevant publications the creativity has to be supported by this and all that so um, i think we by understanding each other's requirements we can come up with solutions that protect interests of both of us and this could happen only because there was a dialogue, continuous dialogue, which was happening. And I think that is what is required. Now, Daisy Forum of India has provided a continuous platform. It has not ended. It has evolved into new dialogues. And stakeholders, including publishers, are coming together and sitting together and saying that, how can we go to the next step of increasing the number of titles, increasing the number of users, born accessible i mean all these issues we are still working on it so it's a continuous process and i think that's a process the dialogue process that needs to be undertaken by various uh, groups with the stakeholders and that's the only way forward thank you uh, 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 mr manocha uh, i i was just also uh, wanted to know i mean uh, what kind of response you get from mainstream schools uh, for the uh, for the let's say uh, to to get in touch with the Sudhamya Pustakala and all, do you have some data on that? So mainstream schools again, you see this is this has we have been fighting several battles, uh, you know. So mainstream schools, um, there is still a lot of it. It's a mixed bag. So there are few schools who are very very favorable. In initially, they were very skeptical, but once they started dealing, starting knowing that, you know, we are not uh, devils and we are not uh, somebody who is coming from outer planet. We are also normal human beings who just need a little bit of, uh, you know, some some uh, different way of handling, and, and it, it is, it's fairly possible to be done within an institution. Then things become very very conducive and favorable. In fact. They start seeing the positive side of all that inclusion. Uh, but before inclusion happens, uh, there is a lot of resistance. And yes, mainstream institutions have been resisting a lot, even government schools, uh, where that is completely mandatory. Uh, it, it, not just government, I mean, it's actually mandatory for any institution. And they, nobody can deny admission to a person on the basis of disability. Actually. So 
So that's a legal system. But yes, they would want to avoid as far as possible when, when they don't know about the real uh, scenario. So yes, we do have to fight those um, attitudinal barriers. And that's part of the game. Thank you. Hi, Tarun. Please go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, hope I am audible. Uh, yes. Th yeah. Thanks a lot for the wonderful lecture. I have two questions in particular. My first question is, uh, like Sugam Pustakale and Bookshare, do we have some common library uh, for the books in audio format? And wherein, I mean, international exchange could take place and it is available uh, widely for people. And my second question is, uh, other than increasing the awareness, what is the role of an institution? Actually, uh, I mean, whether uh, like one way is that individuals uh, through Bookshare and uh, Sugama Pustakale and such libraries can get the books, but there can be some uh, uh, like one other way wherein different institutions could maybe contact, uh, you know, different uh, publishers so that uh, the, the books could be provided uh, to different different people because uh, basically some books actually are required in different different sections wherein say visually impaired uh, children are there you know? so is uh, do, you, do you see a role for institutions to play uh, wherein they can contact different publishers directly to get books so uh, first about your uh, about the audiobooks actually audiobooks uh, when it comes for audiobooks for persons with print disabilities they are um, very much part of sugama pustakale actually so it's a and this whole global book uh, accessible uh, this abc global book service actually majority of books are actually audiobooks there so we have international exchange mechanism also put in place uh, for that uh, in the mainstream, of course, you have Audible, Storytel, and all those things are there, which are mainstream bookstores for audio audiobooks. You can actually buy mm -hmm. audiobooks and start listening to them. But in special library system, uh, Stukram Bustakade does give you a lot of collection of very good audiobooks. Uh, second, uh, you're talking about the role of institutions. Of course, Daily Forum of India does not give direct membership to individuals at all. It is because we, we acknowledge that institutions have a huge role to play in this whole scenario. So whether it is Sugana Pustakale or Deji Forum of India, um, it's basically an institution that comes up first as a first candidate. And then the users are then affiliated to those institutions and then become part of Sugana Pustakale. So an individual cannot apply for Sugana Pustakale membership directly. You have to be a member of either Saksham or some other institution. To become part of Sugama Pustakala. And this is done because uh, the, the special educators or your mainstream educators, um, the service providers, they have, as you said, very rightly said, uh, when, when, when a student needs a book, we can't expect the student to go to the publisher and get the book. There's no such mechanism. So with the, the resource center that we are proposing to set up in Karunimal College will play this role. That is what we are also currently doing. Uh, our copyright exception does not force or publishers to share the, their copies, right? So, so this is going beyond copyright exception and uh, the Marrakesh Treaty. We go beyond it where we are trying to establish collaborations with publishers to either tell them that make your book accessible, born accessible, and we will buy it. You know, then there's no problem. Um, there is a library system in place. If an individual doesn't uh, can't afford, we as a library will buy it for that uh, individual and provide it, provide the copies to them. But then uh, we also say that if you can't make your mainstream book accessible, at least contribute your digital text to us so that we don't have to spend ten thousand rupees, but spend maybe just one or two thousand rupees and convert that book into accessible form. So th those kind of negotiations are happening and. The dialogue at least started with the Marrakesh Treaty. Now we are taking it to a different level. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Hi, Sharda. I believe you had a question. 
Ah uh, yes, uh, yes, madam. Uh, sir, uh, actually, I have a questions uh, like uh, how a library like uh, I'm working. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, uh, actually, I'm working uh, in a university uh, in Orissa. So I wanted to know that whether the university library they can connect to with. Uh, Shugame Pustakalaya or individually uh, a student can uh, uh, take the uh, membership. And sir, a uh, second question is like, sir, like in a, in a different state, they have said different uh, languages and we know some uh, OCR, uh, the recognition uh, software is only uh, limited uh, with uh, only English and some uh, uh, languages, but sir, is there any uh, plans in your uh, future like uh, to add some uh, regional language uh, uh, OCR uh, to develop so that uh, they can, uh, the individual, they can uh, uh, taking the scanning option and they can also, uh, that will help them uh, for their studies. So I've got many, many good news for you, actually. First one, you said, can your college uh, join Sugam Pustakale? Yes, the answer is clearly yes. Uh, for serving persons with disabilities within your college, your college can actually join as an institution. Uh, number two, can an individual directly apply uh, if the institution is not taking interest? Then again, answer is yes. But at the time of applying on Sugama Pustakali, you just have to choose an institution which are already listed, who are already members. So individual uh, can uh, take membership of any of the existing Sugama Pustakali members. Uh, member organizations and become a member of Sugama Pustakale. So that uh, is the first question, both yes. Second part, OCR. Good news again for you is uh, that OCR today, which, which, which is currently usable, is not just there for English and Hindi. It's actually available for even Odia language or almost covering all Indian languages. The OCR solution does exist today. And that is what we are currently using for producing books in accessible format. So if you need more information on how do you want to use it, how to use it, um, just write to write to us, library at section.org. Sure, sir. Th sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. I believe there are no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Manocha, for addressing the questions raised by the participants and the extremely thought-provoking lecture. I would also like to thank the participants for their incisive questions that made the session interactive and even more engaging. And last but not least, the sign language interpreters, Gargi and Stuti, for interpreting the session. We now break and shall reassemble at 4 p.m. for yet another interesting lecture. The next lecture will be on disability and designs. Thank you for joining. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.